Welcome, Namaste, and welcome to Dr. Shah's clinic. In yet another video, we are going to discuss on low sperm motility, its causes, classification, symptoms, as well as the various treatments for low sperm motility. Now, before we actually look at low sperm motility, let's understand what is the normal sperm motility. Now, a, a, a man is said to have a normal sperm motility if his percentage of progressively motile sperm is more than 32%. And this 32% number comes from the WHO 2010 Andrology Laboratory Guideline Reference Values. So for all practical purposes, we use the 32% cutoff. And when we, when we use the term progressively motile sperm, it means or it refers to spermatozoa that are actually moving from point A to point B in a particular high power field as seen under the microscope. You can put a look at the image on the right. And if you look at the image on the right, if a sperm moves from point A to point B, that sperm is scored as a progressively motile sperm. And the patient is said to have normal sperm motility if the percentage of progressively motile sperm is more than 32%. Now, the two other types of sperm, uh, other types of, uh, sperm motility scoring that we should look at is basically non-progressive sperm motility and immotile sperm. Now, individual, now the non-progressive uh, sperm is the sperm that does not move from point A to point B. These sperms will move in a circular fashion, either in the same spot or will just be vibrating in the same spot. And I blew, I blew, you can look at the image on the right again. So, if a sperm moves just around a single point, just around a single spot or a particular HPF in a circular fashion, instead of actually moving progressively from point A to point B, that's non-progressive motile. Now, the third type of motility is immotile sperm, as the term itself is self-explanatory, immortal sperms do not move at all. So usually a SEM analysis report will have three uh, motility, uh, you know, uh, grading criteria, progressive, non-progressive and an, and an individual is set to have low sperm motility specifically only if the percentage of progressively motile sperm is less than 32%. Now in some individuals, you know, um, uh, the motility will be almost zero. So if the patient has zero sperm motility, then this patient is said to have what's called as total asthenozoospermia. For all other practical purposes, if a patient has a sperm motility less than 32%, the patient is said to have asthenozoospermia. So there's a difference between asthenozoospermia and total asthenozoospermia. Zero sperm motility means total asthenozoospermia, and for all values that are less than 32%, the di clinical diagnosis is asthenozoospermia or low sperm motility. Now, what's very important to understand here is that why why do we need uh, you know uh, the 32 percent or why do we need a high value of you know progressively motile sperm? This is because you know look at the image on the right. I put an image on the right. You know, semen is usually deposited in the vagina, and semen liquefies. Once semen actually liquefies, the sperms have to swim up all the way to the fallopian tube, which is the site of fertilization, and the speed of the sperm is very important, isn't it? And they have to progressively move quickly from one place to the other place. Speed is also a very important factor. If they don't move, if the sperms are going to move slowly or if they don't move actually, what's basically going to happen is they are not going to reach the egg at the time of ovulation and because of that infertility or subfertility is going to ultimately result. So the more the number of motile sperms in the ejaculate, the chance of fertility is usually better. Now this does not mean that just because you have 80% sperm motility, fertility is guaranteed. It doesn't mean like that. Your female partner should also be healthy, she should have regular cycle, there should be no tubal blocks and of course there are a range of other factors as well. But bear this in mind, the higher values of motility usually corroborate with higher pregnancy rates. So count is important, motility is probably the most important variable as compared to count or even the sperm morphology. And uh, what are the symptoms of low sperm motility? Now, What's very important to bear in mind is that most healthy individuals, you know, 95% of men will not have, will, abs will have absolutely no symptoms of low sperm motility. They'll be very healthy, they'll be well androgenized, their sexual function will be good, and they'll be very, very healthy. And only when they do a semen analysis will they even actually realize that they have low sperm motility, and that's the reason why they're not able to father a child in the first year of marriage. What's also very important to bear in mind is that we do not diagnose low sperm motility with just one single semen analysis. So maybe you have done, the patient has done a single semen report, single semen analysis or a sperm test report outside and he has been diagnosed with low sperm motility. What we do here in our clinic is we repeat the test two or three times. 
we vary the abstinence period and recheck it two three times and if say all the two or three reports or four reports that we do persistently show uh, a, a, a motility percentage less than 32 percent only then the patient is diagnosed to be asthenosal spermic if one report shows low motility the other report shows normal sperm motility please understand it's the normal report is what that counts for us for us that patient is normal this is because there is something called a natural variation in semen parameters that means a single individual if he gives multiple semen samples over different periods of time one report may be abnormal but if the remaining three reports are normal that patient is still considered normal so this this is a pro tip please bear this in mind so if you have one single report that shows low sperm motility please don't get alarmed please go don't go running to the doctor please don't start taking medicines repeat it once more in a different lab before you come to a conclusion of low sperm motility or show it to an andrologist near you for a proper opinion on the low sperm motility so there are so if we have discussed we have looked at the definition of low sperm motility we have looked at the different types of sperm motility we have also discussed on the symptoms of low sperm motility now another pro tip that i want to tell you here is that in some individuals you know what basically happens is there is low sperm motility along with excessive cough chronic cough chronic sinusitis chronic respiratory tract infection and this is a very small proportion of individuals maybe about 0.5 to 1% of men these men we have to suspect what's called as young syndrome or cartagenous syndrome now if you take the semenalysis report of these men basically what happens is the sperm motility will be very very low or almost absent these patients may even have total asthenosis sperm so in such men what we can do is basically go with assisted reproductive techniques instead of wasting time so that's a pro tip that you should definitely bear in mind now what are the you know basically what are the causes of low sperm motility now the causes of low sperm motility are numerous but you know we can basically divide them into lifestyle causes environmental causes lastly medical causes lifestyle causes of sperm motility what are the lifestyle causes of sperm motility and this is usually related to excess alcohol intake recreational drug use number 2 number 3 excessive smoking excessive intake number 4 excessive intake of carbohydrate rich meals and sugar sweetened beverages number 5 improper sleep wake cycles so normally when a patient comes to us we try to set all these three things now what are the environmental causes of excessive low sperm motility low sperm motility now environmental causes of low sperm motility include exposure to pollution exposure to radiation exposure to heat prolonged travel times uh, also uh, you know um, you know for specific occupational uh, jobs where you know the individual may be exposed to you know radiation uh, you know uh, specifically x-ray technicians or laboratory technicians who may be handling harmful chemicals or maybe inhaling harmful chemicals you know certain job profiles are you know associated with you know sperm motility problems and if you have a job where you know you work with you work from home you work with your laptop on your lap or you have a habit of keeping your cell phone in your pant pocket for a prolonged period of time throughout the day that can also lead to low sperm motility so these are all some environmental factors uh, lifestyle come environmental factors of low sperm motility what are the medical causes of low sperm motility medical causes uh, you know are usually related to gen- oxidative stress states so for example if you if you have if you have had a long protracted disease so you've had high fever in the last 6 months you know you had a, you had some some other severe infection say suppose you suffered from dengue or malaria or you had tuberculosis you took anti tuberculosis drugs for a prolonged period of time your sperm motility will be low so pr- any illness that is prolonged and you have taken a prolonged treatment for the corresponding illness that can itself result in low sperm motility because your hormonal your male reproductive axis basically shuts down it's called ontogenic regression when your male reproductive axis shuts down the quality of sperm production goes down so any protracted long illness can lead to low sperm motility please remember that diabetes a systemic uncontrolled systemic hypertension surgery is done in the abdomen surgery is done in the testes um, you know untreated hydrocele's uh, and uh, untreated testicular infection uh, untreated unresolved testicular injuries mumps or cystitis uh, undescended testes these are all conditions that have been associated with low sperm count and we clinically evaluate for these patients sexually transmitted diseases like chlamydia and gonorrhea which can actually cause obstruction mm-hmm. of the reproductive system is also associated with low sperm motility infections of the prostate infections of the seminal vesicle can also lead to low sperm motility and sometimes in some individuals we look at what's called a condition called as young syndrome we already discussed on young syndrome cartagenous syndrome and more rare conditions like 9 plus 0 syndrome can actually lead to completely absent sperm motility also called as total asthenosal sperm 
So what are the treatment options you know, for low sperm motility? Now the treatment options for low sperm motility ultimately depends on the cause. So whatever causes the condition has to be treated first before you know basically. So basically with respect to treatment options what we try to do is we take a full-fledged clinical history and we, we, we advise the patient active lifestyle management. So the patient has to go for walking regularly, healthy food habits, we give a fertility chart to the patient. Number three, the sleep wake cycle should be optimized. Uh, the patient should not work with the laptop on his lap or keep his cell phone in his pan pocket. Number five, the patient, uh, you know, we give medications to the patients. We give simple, very, very simple antioxidants like folic acid. We also use medical therapy with letrozole or anastrozole which can improve the overall sperm quality or the quality of sperm production. And that's not for all patients though, only for select patients. And, um, uh, you know, we, we if these strategies don't work, what we basically advise the patient to go for is a treatment called as IUI, which is intrauterine insemination, where, you know, we separate the motile sperm fraction, inseminate it into the female or the intimate partner, you know, close it to the day of egg release. And if IUI also does not work out, ICSI is only a last resort option. We don't prefer ICSI for all patients. It's an absolute last resort option. So please bear this in mind. There are treatment options for low sperm motility. And the treatment options purely, purely depends on the diagnosis as well as the cause. So I hope you found this video informative. Please like, comment and subscribe. Share this video with all your friends and loved ones. This is Dr. Shah. I'll see you soon with another video. Palakka.